What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Today we have a steel, excuse me, aluminum frame Glock inspired pistol. Now I've reviewed a few other Glock inspired aluminum frame pistols before and none of them were really great. I was never really a big fan. However, Matrix Arms has this M MX-19 and I think they did a really, really nice job. One of the things I like the most is how much you can customize this gun. You can customize it more than most. And excuse me for looking down. The frame, the aluminum frame, you can get it in a bunch of different colors. They have a handful of different colors, so you can get it the way you want. You can get a couple different trigger colors. Um, type of slide cut. So this one here, I think, is a Freedom something or other, but they have like... 10 different slide cuts. They all look very, very aesthetically pleasing. The serrations look very aggressive, but again, when you order it, you can choose the slide design, the slide cut you want, and you won't have to do it after. You can also get different slide colors, different grip col colors as well. So what we'll talk about in a minute is there's a polymer grip that slide, uh, screws in to the aluminum frame, which again, we'll talk about in a minute, and you can get that different colors as well. Different sights, uh, different design barrels. You get the point. I'm not going to go on and on. You can really customize these guns. Anyway, let's get right into it. Magazines. Again, this is a Glock inspired, inspired gun, so it takes Glock mags. Yes, it takes Glock mags. I have to use these god-awful 10-round magazines because Rhode Island sucks. You can use a standard 15-round Glock 19 mag or the 17 or the 33 or the drum, whatever makes you happy. Um, now, besides the frame being aluminum, which I think shoots better, like typically an aluminum or a steel gun or something will shoot better than a polymer gun, um, it also doesn't have the typical Glock grip angle. It, they remove the Glock hump. It's more of a 1911 grip angle. And when I, I'm just personally not a fan of the Glock hump, I can shoot them okay, but I prefer not to have it. Um, so any gun like this, I will definitely shoot significantly better than a gun that has a Glock hump. And if I didn't say it, it's 7075 T6 aluminium. All right, before I get into these grip panels, which I wanna talk a little bit about, because the grip panels are cool, I got two quick things that I don't wanna forget. It takes Gen 3 Glock parts. So, if you just wanna get the frame and put it on your Gen 3 slide, you can do so. If you wanna up, upgrade, customize, change something on the gun, it's Gen 3 Glock box, parts. Second, sponsor of the video, be quick, it's Crossbreed Holsters. I've reviewed a couple of their belly bands, I've reviewed their chest rig, I've reviewed their Reckoning, the Rogue, and the more I use them, the more I like the brand. So when I saw them at NRA, I said, hey, can you pass on a discount code for my followers? They said, yes, Tiberius, you are just so cool, anything for you. They didn't say that. <laughs> they did give a discount code for you guys, though. It's 20% off, the code is Tiberius20. If you need anything from Crossbreed, save yourself the money, hook me up, I make a few bucks. Crossbreed gets a sale, everyone's happy. And the holsters are good, so I think you will like them. All right, the grips. The grips are held in place by five different screws here. The screws do have Loctite on them as well, which I thought was good. You take the screws out and you can uh, replace the different panels, so different colors, and it, it opens up the ability to customize the gun any, any more. I don't know if this could be stippled. I don't know if it's too thin or not. I don't know nothing about no stippling, um, but it does open up the cust how, you, how you can customize the gun more. Um, there was two other things. The texture on the sides and the back is very, very good. It's very aggressive. I like the way it feels. It's not too bad up against your skin, but I think it's a, per a perfect mix of being aggressive. The front strap doesn't have any texture. And when a gun recoils, it recoils this way. So I think the front and the back texture are more important than the side texture, in my opinion. So one of the few things I don't love about this gun is that the front um, panel doesn't have any texturing. That's something if I had my way, I would change. Uh, mag release is standard. It is reversible. If you have very small hands, it's going to be hard to reach this magazine release. Like a lot of guns, I have to readjust my grip. Uh, when you watch the footage of me doing the magazine exchanges, readjust my grip. doesn't really slow me down. You practice enough and you'll get there. Now, when you, uh, when you get the... Trigger, again, you can customize it. You can get that god-awful six-pound Glock trigger, or you can get a very nice three-pound Timney trigger. Go with the Timney trigger. The Timney trigger looks better, feels better. The take-up is stupid short. You really got to practice the take-up so you don't ND when you're when you fire before you intend to. 
the Timney trigger is nice, but it's light and has a very, very, very short take up. So as always, what we're going to do is take a 10 second break. We are going to get up close and personal with this trigger so you can see it, you can smell it, you can taste it. If you lick the screen, blackout coffee is what it's going to taste like because I'm drinking my cinnamon French toast and I'll be right back. That Timney trigger has a really, really short uptake. Be careful with it. Rail, standard 1913 rail, four cutouts. I tried a Surefire, a Streamlight, an Olight, and an Enforce. They all work, no problem. 90% of the time I had a Streamlight TLR1 HL on here. That's what I had available, but they all worked, no problem. Cloud, cloud defensive, where is your EPL pistol light? We need the cloud defensive light. No safeties on these guns because this is my safety. Uh, it does have a standard Glock Gen 3 slide stop slide release, whatever you call it, I don't care. Very easy to use it as a slide release like I like to because it's Gen 3, it's only on the left side of the gun. Strong side for you righties, nothing on the other side, just so you know. What's next, the slide. The slide is 416 stainless steel, which is good. Has a nitrite finish, which is also very, very good. As I mentioned earlier, you have about 10 different almost roughly, I don't know, uh, slide designs you can pick from. This one is the, I believe it's the Freedom Fighter if my memory serves me correctly. The serrations on here are very, very aggressive. Not too aggressive, they just, they nailed that perfect spot in between. I think it's very aesthetically pleasing, but again, there's like 10 different designs. So if you don't like the way this one looks, Plenty of other ones out there that you can choose. Uh, sights are great as well. They didn't put any of those nonsense plastic sights on the gun. I hate when companies put plastic sights on guns on a defensive gun like this. So there, you have a choice between two different Trigicon set of sights. This is a three dot white sight. They're steel. You have a ledge for one handed manipulations. If you're not putting a dot on there, that might be helpful, even though you should be putting a dot on there. And you can also get Trigicon night sights if you prefer. The optics cut is great as well. Uh, that's exactly what I would do if I was designing a gun. It takes the RMR slash Holosun footprint, that super common footprint that a lot of brands take, and it screws directly down to the slide. You don't need an accessory plate or the MOS plate or whatever. It goes right down to the slide, so it sits really low, and it's a lot more durable screwing right down to the slide. I like the way they did it. Taking the gun down is very much very much Glock-esque, or it's the same as a Glock. I'll show you anyway. You make sure it's unloaded. You pull the trigger. You can pull the trigger before or after. I just chose to pull it before. You pull back the slide a little bit, and the takedown levers, you just pull down on the two takedown levers, and the slide should go right off, maybe. What did I do wrong? Let's try that again. Pull down on the take. Oh, takedown levers, my nails. Try that, third try is the charm. Pull the trigger, down on the takedown lever. Oh, there we go. It's very early in the morning, I'm struggling today. If you look inside the frame, all Glock parts, again, Gen 3, pretty standard stuff. Uh, if you look towards the front though, they do have a buffer in here, and they say that helps uh, eat up some of that felt recoil. And I don't know if it's the grip angle, or the grip texture, or the aluminum frame, or the buffer, or a combination of all of them, but this shot, Extremely nice, and uh, I would definitely choose to shoot this over pretty much any Glock any day of the week. Your recoil spring is a captured recoil spring, pretty standard there. The barrel is a four inch barrel, and once again, there's uh, a lot of different, uh, a few different designs you can choose from um, if you don't like the way uh, the, the way mine looks. I will pull up the dimensions on the screen and we should probably pull up the dimensions for a Glock 19 as well. It is just about the same dimensions as a Glock 19. Part of the reason it was hard to pull that slide off, on and off is that buffer. Just so you know that's why, I, uh, well, either I'm tired and the buffer is why I was struggling. You just gotta use a little bit more effort it is not hard. Uh, lifetime warranty, which is great, especially for uh, a newer company that who knows the long-term durability on this on this brand, but the lifetime warranty is great. And every single uh, holster I tried that's made for a Glock, this fit in no problem. So I tried Safari Land, I had some Kydex ones. I can't promise yours will work, but uh, I tried half dozen maybe, and they all worked no problem. So it's around 24 ounces unloaded, tiny bit heavier than a Glock, but it's aluminum frame, and I think the tiny bit of weight 
the, the how nice it shoots makes up for that tiny bit of weight. Now the price is definitely gonna be more expensive. Not only is it an aluminum frame instead of a polymer frame, but all of the tricking out that lots of folks do to their Glock is already done here. You have the better sights, you have the better optics cut, you have the, all the different slide cuts, all the different colors, so I get it. It's a lot more expensive, it's not for everyone, but if you want a nicely done, tricked out gun, uh, it's definitely worth the price if that's something you're looking for. All right, testing. I put a few extra rounds for this gun because again, I don't really know Matrix Arms. This is my first experience with Matrix Arms. I was trying to get to that thousand round count, but damn, ammo is expensive. So I ended up somewhere between seven to 800 rounds, which is still, a lot of money. <laughs> I start drawing from the holster. That's a good test for any new gun. Drawing from the holster, plinking that steel, making that steel ring. Who doesn't love that sound? I, if you look at the shooting footage, I did a lot of shooting lefty. I hurt my, my right shoulder a couple, uh, a month, probably two months ago. So I wanted to practice shooting lefty. God forbid I needed surgery. Plus someone I work with just had shoulder surgery and I'm really rusty shooting left-handed. So I did a lot of shooting with this gun left-handed and there was no like limp wristing malfunctions or anything like that. I did some shooting around my vehicle because I needed the practice and I suck at it. Uh, I did more shooting, I did a ton of shooting lefty. I mean, multiple days, I was so worried that I was gonna need shoulder surgery. I uh, shot it on a cold, cold, cold rainy day, which is always a good test for a gun. Uh, I was reviewing a Mira safety gas mask, so I figured I might as well put some rounds through a pistol with a gas mask. Again, not something I do often, not something I'm great at, and that's why I like to practice. Uh, in between the review, I went on vacation for like 10 days. I came back and poof, spring is here all of a sudden. It's not cold anymore, it's 70 and sunny. So the last two range trips, if you look at the footage here, it's sunny, I'm in a t-shirt, it's nice and warm. Like we went from like 30 degrees in the video to mid 70s, it was crazy the difference. Um, again, more plinking, I did a lot of work with my packed timer. I'm a big, big fan of that packed shooting timer. A lot of magazine exchanges. Uh, and then we did a few competitions with the boys. All right, so all of that testing, I know I dragged that on for a long time. I love the grip angle. I'm gonna mention that first, the grip angle, the grip texture, everything about the grip, I definitely prefer it over a standard Glock. I'm happy that they used, they did not use plastic sights. Excuse me, I'm happy there's no plastic sights. I am a big fan of steel and aluminum grips. This is an aluminum one. I prefer the way those guns shoot over a polymer any day of the week. All the customizing, I should probably mention that first. The different colors, the different slide sights, triggers, or different color polymer grips. There's so much you can customize, which is a, a reason a lot of people get Glock pistols to begin with. Um, common parts, Glock Gen 3 stuff is still very, very easy to get. That Timney trigger is silly. Practice the take up. It's a dope trigger, but make sure you practice. And uh, I think I already said it, but the removable grip panels, if you wanna change the color and customize the gun, I dig that as well. Uh, cons, uh, the, the uh, texture on the front shot. That's the only thing I don't like about the gun. I wish there was some texture on here. I think there's something easy for Matrix Arms to fix. And that's it. Again, the uh, size of the grip is good size. Excuse me. Um, so if you have small hands, you may need to readjust your grip to drop that mag. But if you have small hands, you're probably doing that already with the gun and it probably wouldn't make a difference. Overall, um, it, it appears that Matrix Arms has a real winner here. I like the gun. They're coming out with other sizes, they told me. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to tell you that, but I just did. I can't talk about the long-term durability. Again, seven, 800 rounds, so far so good. We'll see how the brand goes long-term, but mine has been very, very good so far. All right, who do I need to thank? I wanna thank Matrix Arms for loaning me the gun. Very, very nice of them. I wanna thank Crossbreed Holster for sending me all this stuff to review over the past three years or so, and then now giving me that discount code, Tiberius20. Very, very nice of them to support the channel, save you guys a few bucks, and uh, yeah. Awesome, swag, if you wanna support the channel and you're not buying a crossbreed holster, you can just buy a t-shirt, buy a patch. They fit well, as, uh, athletic fit, super soft, made by TriStar Trading Company. The link is down in the video description. That's all I got, I'm done shilling. Most important though, let me thank you for watching. I truly appreciate it, especially if you made it all the way to the end of the video. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you think I deserve it, like, comment, subscribe, enable the bell notification, firing up the dancing Santa. Say hi to Santa. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.